Hi, welcome back to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to continue the lectures from where we left off. So we've been talking about these things called deterministic finite automata, or DFAs. And what those are is a state-based machine, kind of like this one, where we have some states, and in this case we happen to have five states. We have a start state, transitions in between the states, and some of the states are marked with a double circle, meaning that they're final. And when we read a string, we read the string one character at a time and record where we actually go in the machine. And once we're done reading the string, if we are in one of the double circle states, we say accept on that string. And if we're not, we say we don't accept that string. So let's look at a particular string. So let's just say w equals 0, 1, 1, 1, just as a, an example. So what are the set of states that we actually get into in this machine? Well, we start in the start state. So that we so the set of the sequence of states that we go into in this case are q0 because we start there. Then we see, oh, well, the first character is a zero. That means from Q0, which is where we are right now, we follow the transition labeled 0. There can only be exactly one of them, so we don't have any choice to make. So we end up at Q3. So Q3. And then, so now we have consumed the character 0. We can't go back. Uh, we cannot go back. Um, now we're looking at the 1, so we are in Q3 right now. Figure out where we go on input 1. So Q3, well, there could only be one transition with a 1 on it coming out of Q3, which is going to Q4. So the next state in our sequence, or list if you want to think of it that way, is Q4. And then now we have consumed the one, the first one. Then we read another one, which means that we're going to stay in Q4 because if you look, Q4 has a self-loop on 1 right here. So we stay in Q4, and when we consume the 1 again, we're still going to be in Q4. So the sequence of states that we visit on this particular string is uh, Q0, Q3, and then Q4 three times. So notice that I don't actually say set here. I don't say set of states. Why? Because if we did say set of states, then that would just be Q0, Q3, and Q4. Well then now look at the string w prime equal 0, 1. Well, the, se the sequence of states that I visit is q0, q3, q4, just like before. But then that means that the set of states that I visit is exactly the same as this one. So the, so the sequence of states that I visit in this case is q0, q3, q4 in that order. But the, the set of states that I visit is q0, q3, q4, because uh, there's no duplicates here, but, and we eliminate duplicates here. So notice that these two sets are the same. So that really tells us something that we can't really talk about a set of states, that we have to talk about a sequence of states. So that's why we are talking about sequences of states. So what is a sequence? It's just a ordered list. So there's, it's just a list of things uh, in states in this case, and there's a certain order. So one, one of them is first, the next one is second. I can't put them in any order I want. There is a particular order here. So how do we actually formally prove that this is the sequence of states? And another thing that's nice about sequences is if I tell you what the sequence of states that I visit is, then it is possible to reconstruct the original string. Not always, but we could attempt to reconstruct the original string. Because if you think about it, Q0 to Q3, the only thing that takes us there is 0. Q3 to Q4, the only thing that takes us there is 1. Q4 to itself, the only thing that takes us there is 1. So in this particular case, you can reconstruct the string, not always. Because if we have two characters going from one state to another, then it could be one of those two, so we would have, have ambiguity there. But 
the nice thing is that, um, and another thing that is nice about sequences is, look at how long the sequence is in this case. It's five states, and in this case it's three. So notice that for the strings themselves compared to the sequence, is always one longer, and that'll always be true. Why? Because if we have a string of length n, so let's actually just prove uh, this, uh, uh, not proof, I need, need to say theorem first. So theorem, if we have a string, um, if w is a string, with the length of w equal to n, then any DFA on input W will have a sequence of states of length n plus 1, always, for a DFA. So, uh, and how do we actually prove this? Well, let's see. Well, notice that the length of the input was n. So that means that for each of the transitions, we're always going to consume one character. And since the input here has n characters, that means we're going to, have, we're going to take a total of n transitions. So uh, because um, the length of w is n, n transitions will be taken. So what would that look like? Well, we would have to start with the start state no matter what. And then we take some transition, and then we take another transition, etc. Wn. And then we end up in some state here. It could be one of the other ones. Um, but the point is that we're going to have a sequence of n plus 1 states. Why? Because if I just cut this off right here, before we've read any characters at all, we have seen one state. And then if I cut it off here instead, well, that here we've seen two states in the sequence of states, but we've only read one character. And by induction, if I cut it off uh, at the end, that means that we have read n characters and therefore, um, uh, therefore we have seen n plus one states, okay? So that's kind of nice that we know how long the DFA will always take on a given input if you know the length of the input itself. Okay, so we should introduce some more definitions here. So let's just uh, say that sigma here is an alphabet. So, and from recall from before that that just means a finite set of characters. That's, that's all it means. Then we're going to call sigma star, I'm going to put a box around it because we're going to reference this all the time. Sigma star is the set of all strings over sigma. So what in the world do I mean? So let's do an example. So if I let sigma to be the set 0, 1, so the, the characters 0 and 1, then here, sigma star is the set of all binary strings, because we're just looking at every possible string you can make with zeros and ones, including the empty string, and that's, so that's another thing. So we're going to call epsilon right here, we're going to call this the empty string. And, and what does empty mean here? It means the length of that string is zero. There's no characters in it. And we come across the empty string all the time in this class and in programming in general anyway. Okay, so, but if I have like say sigma to be zero, one, two, those are all the ternary uh, strings, base three strings. If I have sigma being a, b, c, all the way through z, then sigma star would be all the possible words that you can make with the English uh, alphabet. So that is what an alphabet is. And now let's talk about what a computation is. 
So a computation, so this is a formal definition of what a computation is, of a DFA, and let's call it M, um, and a string W in sigma star, where, again, the length of W is N, just for our purposes, is a sequence of n plus 1 states, and I'm going to call them uh, s0 up to sn. So notice I started the subscript at 0 and ended at n, so therefore there are n plus 1 states in that list. So, and then there are some conditions about what this sequence can be. I can't just list any old states in any old order. We have to follow a certain order of what the DFA actually did on that string. I can't just list any old states in any old order. Well, let's see. Well, we have to make sure that the start, the first state in this sequence is the start state in the DFA. So S0 is the start state of M. We gotta make sure that that's true. And S sub I plus 1 is the state found after taking the transition from S sub I on character WI. And what is WI? What we're going to reference the string to be is that w is equal to w1, w2, up to wn. So each of the characters, I'm going to call the first one w1, the second one w2, etc., all the way to the end. So this is saying that to get to the, to the i plus first state, I got to read the ith character. So for example, if I wanted to go to s sub 1, the next one in this sequence, I got to figure out where to go from S0 on input. Uh, actually, I, I have this backwards. It should be WI plus 1. That, that's my mistake. So it should be WI plus 1. But to get to S sub 1, I need to go from S0 on input character W1, which is the first character in the string. And then to get to S2, I got to go from wherever S1 was and look at the character w2 and carry through that all the way to the very end. Okay, and one more definition, a computation is accepting, so it's an accepting computation if s sub n, the last state, is a final state of m because this sequence is just a sequence of states. It may or may not land in a final state, but we're gonna say an accepting computation is one that actually ends in a final state. So those are some definitions and we're going to carry more through that next time. And I'll see you then. If you want to support the channel further, please like and subscribe to the channel. There are plenty of links in the description if you want to support this even further. And as always, I'll see you next time.